Thank you everyone for joining us. I'm gonna give folks just a minute to join us in this space, but as you're here with us, um, if you'll share in the chat where you're joining us from, that would be lovely. And then we'll get started in just a moment. Thank you everyone for joining MOAD and the Asian Art Museum in presenting Poetry for Black and Asian Solidarity, featuring poets Tongo Eisen Martin and Michelle Mushley. My name is Nia McAllister and I'm the Public Programs Manager at the Museum of the African Diaspora. As we begin, I invite you to share in the chat where you are joining us from. Though we're gathered virtually, I want to acknowledge the spaces that we're occupying. We recognize that all non-native people to this land our descendants from settler occupiers or descendants of those forcibly brought to this continent. Moad occupies the unceded land of the Ramatesh Ohlone people, and we pay our respects to the Ohlone and their elders, both past and present, who have stewarded this land throughout the generations. We encourage all to learn more about the native lands that you occupy by visiting nativeland.ca. It is truly, truly an honor to be presenting tonight's timely and important program. Tonight's event will feature poetry readings by Tongo Eisen Martin and Mush Lee, accompanied by Liz Sook, as well as a dialogue about cross community solidarity and the role of poetry in change making. We will close this evening with a short Q&A, so please direct all of your questions to the Q&A box. Before I introduce our wonderful presenters for tonight, I will pass it off to Indra Mungal for the, from the Asian Art Museum to share a few words. Welcome, Indra. Thank you so very much, Nia. Happy Year of the Tiger and happy Black History Month to everyone in attendance tonight. The Asian Art Museum's Diversity, Equity, Access and Inclusion Committee stands in solidarity with the Black community. We affirm that Asian and Black communities share a mutual pursuit for liberation. And to quote author Jeff Chang, Asian Americans owe so much of their presence in this country to the Black struggle for freedom from our birthright or from birthright citizenship to the ability to tell our stories to the civil rights we enjoy. We want to be on the right side of history and that side is squarely in fighting against anti-Black racism. Our partnership with MOAD allows us to explore intersectionality between the communities we each serve where identity is nuanced and our stories and cultures are shared with each other. Poetry has used, been used as an act of resistance in struggles historically. And tonight, continuing the struggle, we hope you enjoy two phenomenal poets whom Nia will introduce now. Thank you so much, Indra. It's now my honor to introduce our esteemed guest for tonight. Tongo Eisen Martin is San Francisco's eighth poet laureate. He's the author of California Book Award nominated, Someone's Dead Already, and of Heaven is All Goodbyes, which received a 2018 American Book Award, a 2018 California Book Award, and was named a 2018 National California Booksellers Association Poetry Book of the Year, and was shortlisted for the 2018 Griffin International Poetry Prize. Eisen Martin is also an educator and organizer whose work centers on issues of mass incarceration, extrajudicial killings of Black people, and human rights. He has taught at detention centers around the country, and at the Institute for Research in African American Studies at Columbia University. Michelle Mush Lee is a poet, educator, and arts and culture advocate. Her presentations and storytelling have been featured on HBO and PBS and the National Asian American Theater Festival, New Works Theater Festival, and Under the Radar Festival. Her writing is featured in the 2018 anthology, All the Women in My Family Sing, Women Write the World, Essays on Equality, Justice, and Freedom. Lee serves on the Leadership Advisory Board for Alameda County Department of Education's Integrated Learning Specialist Program as a Senior Advisor of Pedagogy at Youth Speaks and as founding CEO of Whole Story Group. And accompanying Mush is Liz Sook. Liz grew up in the Bay Area with deep roots in deep East Oakland. She has a 25 plus year career in various nonprofit and grassroots organizations in the Bay Area, 
and currently sits in the board of Real People's Fund and California Calls. When Liz joined Oakland Rising as a leadership development manager, transitioned to political director in fall of 2019, and now serves as executive director. She is committed to social, racial, and environmental justice for indigenous black and brown communities and passing on these values to her two children. Welcome all. Mm. We are in a monumental moment, a portal to change, as Aaron Dati Roy calls it, a gateway between one world and the next. If marked on the map of the human spirit, we are the space between what is glorious and what is tragic, what is light and what is difficult what is left and what is right. Expanding our imagination is what's required. When Grace Lee Boggs spoke these words, she empowered countless people around the world to find the strength within and together to defy hate, to seek out love, love in the presence of our enemies, love in places where we were made to believe nothing good could grow. Who will be the neighbor to the one who is hurt and wounded? Who among us has not ever been hurt and wounded. After all, are we not all artists of creative survival? Are we not all children of travelers and seekers, island and mainland, new world and old country, all trapped between the hyphen that says we are culturally here and not. We are Asian women, we are born loud. We are black future and power. We are fist and we are summaries of nightmares, rewriting scarcity myths. We are redeeming mercy for every love we have killed without even knowing it. We are freedom fighters sent from the past. My story is a soundtrack to the best cooked meal you have ever had. We are more, we are more. We are more than the stories written of us without us. In the world we are becoming, the one we are making even tonight, black and gold bodies get to be soft and silent by choice. In the world we are becoming, the one we are both breaking and remaking, we lay down our guns and for once we feast first while the rice is still hot and the army stew is rich in meat when libation is cold and the oxtail steams. Let me speak something sweet. 
into the ear of great grief. Let us speak ourselves into a good story. You know, uh, a lot of God can happen in three seconds. And not much heaven, no. Here is a, a man before a fight, a leave me alone type character emerging from the penniless death of a one way street fiction, a fancy way of saying I'm going to make it even if I have to drive backwards. All I have is chord changes and a thousand backhands driving the street like I'm choking a car full of nephews. Hasn't been the sun since November and there hasn't been a street I can't choke to death. This city better back down. You see this gun on the table? And something about staring until it all feels stable. Why wouldn't I protect everyone on my death? Sleep late. My son better be quick. My daughter better shoot first because we fall for no one. We fall for nothing. Okay, the first thing you'll feel is the heat. This lady would tell me, trying to tell me about possession, drink life, need is what I'm mostly hearing. Most of the world leaves me alone to breathe smog like a giant to go to jail every once in a while when the genocide kicks up in late May when politicians have too easy a time. I'm gassing backwards out of one way street in honor of myself and in honor of you if you understand the nature of the world. How long I've been just like my father, one hell of a resemblance says the anxiety of the neighborhood. This is a crossroads or a crossroads narrative or so much crossroads. We get in the habit of turning back, turn back only to find themselves remembering me, but not my last words of man before a fight to feel the heat. But there's nothing to keep in mind. There's nothing to remember. Really, there's nothing to be just this moment then another, then stare, then it all becomes stable. Then the table layers go fuzzy and Fridays, an unfamiliar face peeking in the window. It's cool to panic for a second. Composure is wasting on your worst enemies. People are marked on that sidewalk. You're the only thing life size. Everybody knows this in a wire hanger empire. When the blood stops walking, that feeling isn't father enough to be permission to fold. You better swing one more time. That father yours rose from the grave and said, just give me five more minutes. He said, running water is a myth. It's, it's us who are running up, down, all alongside this water. And people don't rise from the grave. They're not laid down neither. It's us who flip all around their body. So beware when the people around you look like they about to jump. It might be your time. You'll feel the heat. And when four walls demand to be four walls and the earth outside muse, don't panic. Don't try to recreate the earth outside. Don't tell jokes to yourself. Don't even talk disrespectfully to the four walls. Instead, unclench your fists and walk away. There might be heaven if you understand the nature of the world. Tung dang ga a tung dang ga a tung gi dung dang ne sa dang ko kwa na bi no we na we chu mo chu ko o u ri ne sa sa dang an ai ai ga tu du tu Women I love live at the bottom of the well. Women I love, they bury their smiles deep beneath persimmon trees, undressed like the last thing his father said before he left. The women I love are tasked and tasked and tasked with ascertaining meaning from ambiguity. The women I love are gold women, are amber women, are black women, are poet women, are thunderclap women, are women of otherness, of women, are women who glean story and myth from the dividing line. If there's nothing else you take away from this poem, receive this. The women that I love, the women of caravan and midnight candles, of sorrow and seasick scales, Women made of skin, of scorched earth and moonlight, of poorness and permanent dirge. These women are always in transit, moving from one world to the next. Women I know sleep like infants in the arms of an enormous past. The motherless mother can never get it right. The fatherless wife, she don't know how to hold man in good light. But the women I love keep time. So what if we are pendulum swinging out of sync? The women I know are the women in me and we lie down a dead red seed, but we are the home of birds. Broken shells from the hatching of a bird's first egg and the remains of death pile up and this be girl blues. For every one of us has a grave inside our body 
a place where birth and death sweat. Between our legs lives a glorious port where all humans visit and struggle to get somewhere. So this is for the girl somewhere who hides behind a steel mouth and big ass headphones. For the girl out there who thinks she's half crazy to the one who closes up like a fist, punching her apologies on closet doors for every, every girl uncomfortable in a pair of shorts who sits alone in the dark drinking tears just to take up less space to the daughter afraid to break free from her mother's judgments to the skeptic who does not pray to Allah but falls on her knees at the end of every day like purple bruises and rain or the blue of every flame. If you are hard to touch, this one's for you. To the girl who bleeds underwater and finds God's face on her wrist. Maybe it's time, up, maybe it's time we come up for air. Maybe we are fucked up, but we might be fabulous. We might be broken, but I bet you we're also mending. So come here and I will stand on water with you in fishnets, waiting for the tide to rise. I go to the railroad tracks and follow them to the station of our enemies. A cobalt tooth man pitches pennies at my mugshot negative. All over the United States, there are toddlers in the rock. I see why everyone out here got in the big cosmic basket and why blood agreements mean a lot and why I get shot back at. I understand the psycho spiritual refusal to write white history or take the glass free one. White skin tattooed on my right forearm ricochet sewage near where I collapsed into a rat infested manhood. My new existence is living graffiti. In the kitchen with a lot of gun cylinders to hack up. House of God in part, no cops in part. My body brings down to Christmas. The new bullets pray over blankets made from the old bullets. Pray over the 28th hour's next beauty mark. Extrajudicial Confederate statue restoration to waistband before the next protest poster. Hey, by the way, time is not an illusion, Your Honor. I will save your desk for last. You are witty, Your Honor. You're moving money again, Your Honor. It's only raining one thing, Now white cops. And prison guard shadows reminded me of spoiled milk floating on an oil spill. A neighborhood making a lot of fuss over his demise. A new life for a Black Panther party. Malcolm X's ballroom jacket slung over my son's shoulder, the figment of village. A new news to a new white preacher, all in an abstract painting of a president. They bought slavery some time, didn't it? The tension screeches of military boats in Election Tuesday cars a cold-blooded study in leg irons proof that some white people have actually fondled nooses, that sundown couples made their vows of love over opaque peach plastic and boat action audiences. The Medgar Ever second is definitely my favorite law of science. Fondled noose clippings and primitive Methodists, my arm changes imperialisms. Simple policing versus structural frenzies. Elementary school script versus even Wider white spectrums, artless bleeding in the challenge of watching civilians think at terrible rituals they have around the corner. They let their elders beg for public mercy. I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen these kids' heads in the arrows myself and see how much gravy spills out of family crests. Modern fans of war, one with their t-shirt poems and t-shirt guilt and me having on the cheapest pair of shoes on the bus. I have no choice but to read the city walls for signs of my life. The story of who we as people might be when we dare to belong is the story of a drip. It's a story of a brick that dreams of becoming a waterfall. The story of who we might be when we dare to belong to each other is a name that's kind of difficult on the tongue. When we dare to belong, we become the hyphen that bridges everything that is human and heaven, everything that is self and other. When we see the humor and the heartbreak in the eyes of the one who lives across the myth of the dividing line, we poke a hole in that sky of stories that says that you and I 
Tongo and Liz, Tongo and I, Liz and I are better off divided. When we dare to belong to each other, we disrupt the mythical parable that promises safety in our separateness. But remember the radical love and friendship of Grace and Jimmy, Bruce and Jesse. When we dare to belong, we revel in deep traditions colliding with unlikely friendships. We come together across dividing lines, across dividing lines, across dividing line, cross that dividing line to create to heal, to empower us all. We be a story. We be a story of a love so brave it braids a bridge across currents of shame and silence. We be a story of a love so brave it braids a bridge over trouble, transforms pipelines of raw oil into acres of alkali and birds of paradise. Meet me there in the city where we have cleansed the sky of stories that says we're better off divided. Walk me there to the sanctuary where we disrupt the mythical parable that promises safety in our separateness, where we pray in all the way humans have ever prayed for justice and joy, for stories of solidarity, for freedom, freedom. There, there, past the cipher, past the hoop, where the bridge bends into a circle there, there, where there is no first and no last, there is no end and no beginning, in the middle of the story where we have forgiven each other's hopes that our pasts could have been any different. Where we stay, when I swear to you, I would rather look away. Where the peacemakers, the healers, the storytellers, the lovers are at last at the center of all things beautiful to us in this world. We don't house our history of pain in cages. We give thanks for the breaking that brings out the human and the heaven, the self and the other. In this world, we dance to the collapse of guns. In this world, there is no hidden meaning for tears. We have no reason to run. We'll know when we are there, when the most beautiful words in the human language can stand untranslated. We'll feel the sheen and the sweat of our delirious hearts breaking down borders and bridging a way through. We'll redesign the aisles made to divide, move as flesh moves with bone, speak as teeth speak with tongue. And we won't withhold our neighbor from the pain that we all know that it takes to grow but we will not hold hope. It will be a home for each of us, made from the parts we were once so sure were too broken to be made whole. Sure. Shigo. Societies uh, wander together like hopeful drops of a virus. Citizen testaments bent on offering me a nation of breadwinners to hold me back like it's a brinks. I wrinkle the concrete sometimes like flesh. My Martin Luther King permanence turned away from a podium into the reeds like God is the dangerous twin. Black August to the mountaintop balcony on my bedroom floor, you know, they steal you from the earth itself and suspend you and your broken neck from their foolish euphoria. From the loyalty oath for their great superstitions, loyalty oath to their agrarian reform, I return to my mother completely disrespected. For peeling the heat off of purgatory, they kill poets like me. Walk me away from my poems, never to be heard from again in this final industrial complex of bloodlines picked over, picked through, sport and spiritual death of your devil at least half made. Police become a pretty word. I'm reading a lynch mob shoestrings like they were tea leaves teaching you how to write about cities. It's the 25th century and the mirror people. Tyranny against your chump, chimes your chump to be mocked even with a gun in your car. A cubit of needlework spelled tune for the proletariat, the relapse ministry. Talented people curled up in a fetal position next to a diamond die, just another service day in the theatrics of tea house fascism and a bouquet of surveillance cameras and the poverty of God, new blue eyes, corpses of water. Newly potted presidency of one big shiny coin if you ask animated capitalism and other non-literal voids, well, killing his white freedom. 
the deification of hyphens. Medicine bread and picture shows. Great protesters in LA. Guests of our ink drop kicking rose in the grave. You are DC me. Like a stone torn in half, the pen advances. Despite CIA guideposts, despite non African past and futures, a metaphorical but not surreal day in a horn ridden life. Horn player improvising king. Like a radio prize fight featuring Shango himself, a real hand sweeps the land of racism. May I return to the ground. May I make progress with the gun. Our mother Emmanuel, they put on music that evening. A swinging type body language for you to drink with fermented $5 the bills for your body language, some applause. My past stomach lining neither a good thing nor a bad thing, like being psychic on the way to a lethal injection. It'll sit you down with Lady Day. Lady Day leading you to surrender their souls to Africa too soon. Potty thought floating in a cup of water, she saved me. Accessing my stomach, accessing the love of the American lynch. Coast sleeves wooden and avalanche into the wrist. Our mother Emmanuel, avalanche into the sharp keys. Pain, the deal you make with pain. Piano makes sense for them. Lay hands on the world gradually. Addressing the bending necks on the streets of the north. Travelers sailing in pain, repeating pain in the north. Ten trigger fingers on that piano of harmony would have me. Putting a hundred fights on every direction offered her. Lady Day, leaning on trees again, recruiting the countryside itself, saying, lay your plan out on this lightning. Make your poems a corner pocket of men. I've greeted the blues itself. America may clean my dead body, but will never include me. There goes the poet, killing without killing. Never mind this painting of your language. May I be a meaningful lynching. A crow's passing, good and dead by the afternoon. This poem is published in a book and I can't leave my laptop to go get the book, so. I hope the piece that I just pulled up is the right piece. Here we go. Uh, this is for my Oakland people who are in the room. I'm born in Frisco, just so everybody knows. Let's not get it messed up. But I love my Oakland. I've been in Oakland for 20 years. So um, You were born in a pool of blood steps away from the platform that Oscar Grant was slain. Stay. My midwife whispers this in the 18th hour of my labor. My arms hang like two white flags over the edge of the birth tub in surrender. My belly is a stick of dynamite and the universe won't grant it the luxury of exploding. Jeez, my darling, I wish we could have met someplace less bloody, but your father and I made you here. And that night, the steel train that witnessed Oscar, Aya, Alan, Jabril, Alicia, Carlos, take their last breath. That same train belted a joyous black hoodie howl announcing your birth. In the 21 hours it took to unearth your name from the crux of my flesh, I petitioned Mother Mary to help me escape this death sentence. I begged her to hurl me into the comforts of Kaiser's manicured halls and picket fence white walls where rooms overflow with epidural and pitocin and bottomless jello and all that other good stuff. My appa whispers, stay, you were made for this. Stay is the shortest prayer offered at the altar on the back of a new lover's head. Stay is the shortest answer any mother might give her son who is ever caught between red blue lights on a blue black night in a city that makes sport of extinguishing black life. To stay in one place in the midst of chaos can sometimes be an act of love. It is the promises we make after the rice hits the carpet in the dead of night during blue flame fights after I've outfitted your father in shame and small and you can no longer hear me and everything in you wants to slam the door and run. Everything in me wants this to be the last time, but we say stay. Let's give it 30 more minutes. And if you aren't ready to push, we'll leave. On Craigslist, Apricot and fig trees line Alameda's prime real estate. They tease me with tastes of sweet nectar suburban afternoons, clean air, California distinguished schools. Funny though, because outside my bedroom window, guns bark and snap, always at somebody's son. They never stop to wonder why the eyes on the other side of the barrel look like his. 
They crack open their blackberry throats and light up the sky in celebration. My city is beautiful. Yes, it's a little complicated too. My city is pretty holy. It's where my lover clean, it's where my lover and I cling to each other in the dark, bodies curved like gold question marks, where the most bearable hoods are lined with Priuses that remind me of, that remind me of, that remind me of my love. When you are older, I'm gonna hold your face to this kind of beat up place. And I'm gonna tell you about survival. I'm gonna tell you about life and ritual and ceremony. When your crayon box mind wonders why we live in a place of more cigarettes than stars, corner stores and bars. I'll lean in when you wonder why the men in blue are so mean, why they're so slow to show, but so fast to pull when we need them most. I will tell you seeds don't always choose their homes. I, I, they are sown. And the most lovely thing I have ever seen was your father. He was pruning a persimmon tree. He turned around and looked at me and said, sometimes we have to teach it to grow. No, uh, all street life to a certain extent starts fear. Uh, sometimes with a spiritual memory, even pre dying soul clap, your father dying, even. And maybe I pushed the city too far. My sensitivities to landfill districting and minstrel whistles, white supremacist graffiti on westbound rail guards all overcome and reauthored. Reauthored by revolutionary violence that chose its own protagonist or a muted stage of genius, the garbage is growing voices. Condensed Marxism for worried depressives underpasses in their pockets because they just might be deities or decent dead on the Panther name. A merciful Marxism. Disquieted home life, a metaphor for relaxing next to a person who is relaxing next to a gun. I stare at my father for a few seconds, then return to my upbringing, return to the souls of Ohio, Black folk revolution down there pegging at this point, you know what the clown wants, the respect of the end. Wants to interpret pain only. Wants to pull a 38 out of a begging bowl. Wants me to hurt my hand on this pen. I'm not tired of these rooms. Just tired of the world to give them a relativity. My only change of clothes prosecuted. The government has finally learned how to write poems, shootouts that briefly align, that make up a parable. Parables like white bodies are paid well. Do white men even have leaders? Are all white people white men? A rap pitches a river. Can almost taste the racial divide. Can almost roll a family member's head into a city hall legislative chamber. Those who in this good book will fly. All I do is practice, Lord. Decided not to talk out of anger ever again. Met my wife at the same time I met new audience members for our pain. We pass each other cigarettes and watch cops win. A city gone uniquely linear, heart of the West, do a true universe. I will always remember you in fancy clothes, my wife said. So here I sit, twisting in silk ideation. Rifle made of post bellum tar, targets made of an honest language. This San Francisco poetry is how God knows it. It's me whining, riding among the lesser respected wolves, lesser observed militarization, Dixieless prison bookkeeping. I mean, the California gray coats are coming. Lynch mob gossip and bourgeois debt collection. I mean, it's tempting to change professions, mid poem in a Chicago briefing a white sergeant saying blank slate for all of us after this black organizer is dead. Standard academics toasting two buck wine at the tank parade. Bay of nothing, Lord. Just nuclear cobblestones, gun line athleticism, and the last of the inherited asthma. Children giving white dolls to play with and fear. Facial expressions borrowed from rich people's shoestrings. I can hear hate and teach hate and call tools by people names and name people dead to themselves. No one getting naturalized except federal agents soon. Carbon the equator in the throat soon. I'm sorry to make you relive all this, Lord. All this pre dime monarchy friends putting up politician posters and snorting the remainder of the pace. Mitchell script shoveled into the walls by the elders. My children sharpening quarters on the city's edge for these audiences. I project myself into a ghost-like state for these guys because I do the same. Every now and then, take a nervous look. East sleep becomes Christ. Sleep starts growing a racial identity. Do you ever spiral, Lord? As the gang aids betrayed us, be patient with my poems, Lord. 
and so much pain it's a point to crime. I mean, it has to be if race traders come with it. Lord, is that my revolver in your hand? You know, better presidents than these have yawned at cages, have called us holy slaves, filled the school libraries with cop documentaries. Baby, I don't have money for food. Shit. I don't have a present moment at all. Thank you, Tongo. Thank you, Liz, for all that you've shared. I'm just sitting with all of the words that you've brought into this space. And what I appreciate, appreciate about both of your, your poetry and your work is how you so organically embed this essential truth that we cannot do this alone. From where each of us is situated in our lived experiences, we are essential to each other. We are essential for our collective freedom. And Mush, I'm sitting with what you said, we dare to belong to each other. And so to start this dialogue, I wanna direct this question to the two of you. What have you found to be impactful elements or strategies of movement work for solidarity? I told you that's what he was gonna do. Yeah. <laughs> I told you, right? I was like, that's Tongo. He's gonna be like, go ahead, ladies first. <laughs> um, I gotta put on my glasses for this because now it's getting serious. Um, what do I think are essential uh, movement strategies? I think, uh, you know, I gotta shout out my brother, Evan Bissell. He's an artist, um, cultural strategist, and he talks about the insistence of humanness. I think we start there. I think we start with the purpose I think it comes down to this. I think you find your tribe of people who share the same common purpose, the vision for the type of world you wanna be in, be open to the possibility that there needs to be, that there may be, and might need to be multiple strategies to get there. I think we trip ourselves up in thinking, this is the way, this is the world that I envision and that there's really only one path there. But if you've ever seen the Avengers, it's like it takes lots of people doing all their own little things. And I think sometimes in the movement for liberation, the movement for justice, the movement for love, uh, we get tripped up. Like you're not doing it the way that I, I, I think you should do it. And um, I wonder what it would look like to have that ever expansive kind of movement where we all have our eye on the North Star, but it's it's all good that your strategy is slightly different. We're going in the same direction. And I, I would just add, you know, that that um, that the commitment to anti-imperialism is also a, a, a bedrock for collective um liberation and has sustained us through a few epochs of resistance um when we understand who who is the true enemy uh that we're fighting we literally die for each other 
and we and, and we inspire each other and we teach each other and there's really no um no significant distance um even psychically uh between each other um as long as uh, on the uh, so as as long as um we we have this commitment to really resolve principal contradiction uh there, there's really no people that that no, no two three four five peoples that 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 uh that can't be unified and live in in that live in 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 and the soldier <laughs> in absolute harmony, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you both for that. And you've kind of spoken to it a little bit, but perhaps there's more to elaborate on, but this, you know, idea of intersectionality and we all have our own position, but how, how would you say that then informs you, these ways of connecting with each other and building from our places of unique lived experiences, but also finding those connecting points? I mean, it's almost like I think of it like that, you know, um, you know, the, the, the idea of the, the, the danger of the single story, I almost think of it as like the danger of us embodying a, a, a single kind of social identity is troublesome. It's boring too, right? As a writer, I'm like, that's boring, but it's also troublesome. And uh, that's probably the most articulate thing I can say about that. Uh, it's really e it's really difficult for me not to uh, be in this body uh, when I show up to the movement it's, uh, for whatever it is. And so I, I use the power that it affords me and then I share and relinquish uh, in moments when uh, I have an abundance of or whether it's an unfair abundance of or, you know. And if we're if we're guided by uh, objectives of of collective humanization, um, all I, I think along the lines of, of of what Mush is saying, all all differences can be made into music. Um, and so. It, it went, again, that, that collective, that, that true liberatory process takes the um, take the con take the contradiction, takes the contradictions of of, of, of differences, and and heals them. Uh, it takes the internal contradiction contradictions um, of difference and heals them on the one end, and on the other, um, just makes for um, makes for more interesting culture all around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. And what a poetic way to say that too. All differences can be made into music. I appreciate says, that. Says the poet laureate of Frick. <laughs> I wouldn't expect anything. Yeah, it's almost like we're talking to a poet laureate. <laughs> so you both, beyond being poets, you both do many things. And one of the things is you are both educators. And as we're seeing on a national global context, the, the landscape of education is precarious in many ways at the moment. And so I would like for you both as educators to speak to this importance of cross-community solidarity at this time. T, what you thinking? Well, I think, you know, we have to take responsibility for our political education um out, outside of these institutions i think you know it's 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 interesting and scary how so many of these kind of uh anecdotes these 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 ruling class or these right wing or conser conservative anecdotes almost seem farcical they all going all the way back to no martin luther king day in arizona right 
up, up, up jumps all you know these these uh, uh, the, the the legendary Texas textbooks that no uh, or that 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 ruin all that that ruin public education because their people are, are writing for Texas because they have the most students uh, emerge uh, uh, up comes a, a you know a a, a a George W Bush who just you know look, looks like a, char a character <laughs> uh, uh, the the tea party right fox news all of this, you know, taking uh, 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 taking in their own kind of like highlights, just seem like you know, like uh, 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 are, are you know, just seem almost like a performance. Mm -hmm. but, it, but what is this scaffold towards? Mm -hmm. A real neo Confederate push to take over the next epoch of world history. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's crucial that we not underestimate our own cultural work and, uh, and, and really put the proper, um, give that cultural work like education, the proper exertion, because we see how we, 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 we see how it, it, it works for the other side of, of, of the contradiction. We can, um, you know, we we can scaffold our own movement and scaffold our own our own play to 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 say how the next epoch of history is going to play out. Mm. Man, I mean, shout out right now to all the the OUSD teachers um, who are actively fighting another round of school closures. A couple of years back, uh, uh, a shout out to Roots International. It's no longer open. Shout out to Roots International and all my teachers who were out there and we were out on the picket lines just a few years ago, right before the pandemic. Uh, we were fighting the school board against a set of closures there. Um, I really like what you said, Tongo, and I think I really agree that we've got to take kind of control of our own education. Um, I think one of the most heartbreaking beliefs is the belief that we go into school, the institution of schooling, um, to come out more civically enlightened, emboldened, to speak out and against um, the ways of harm that institutions and people enact on each other and that we enact on ourselves. I think that's one of the hardest things to realize. And it's, a, it's one of the hardest things to balance as an educator, both being in the institution, teaching in the classrooms, working in that system, and then also understanding and having tasted the freedom of what true education, a people's education, a liberatory education is uh, almost 100% outside of that. Not always, there have been absolutely life-changing moments for me and that I've witnessed and I've been a part of that I was not the center of inside the institution, inside schools and the academy. Um, I think it's probably the, the, the thing that I'll say is, the last thing that I'll say is that um, I think the strongest educators happen to be artists and, and culture workers. And so uh, this is my little plug for all the teachers out there <laughs> in Zoom room. <laughs> Support your local teaching artists. Um, uh, in many ways, artists are not un are unencumbered by the ways of the institution, just by definition, by nature, by habit. I mean, there are there are artists too that are probably whack and really, really love it. And I'm talking about like uni, I'm talking about T, I'm talking, you know. And so um, there are many ways to find uh, our teachers. And also shout out to my Oakwood teachers out there fighting the good fight. Yes, thank you. Thank you for bringing that into the space and shouting them out. Um, I also appreciated what you were talking about of like, this is the role. And that was one of the questions I was going to bring to both of you, what you see as either the duty or the charge of the poet and that role of art in change making. You can both speak to that. I'll, brief, I'll, I'll briefly keep it strict. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is probably the question that Tongo and I get asked all the time, like the most. 
look, man, all the <laughs> poets out there, all everybody, we, we, yeah. we need to organize ourselves into, you know, true, uh, truly revolu into revolutionary forces um, it, that whose aim is to rearrange the way that the uh, power and and uh, and production operates. You know. So it's 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 uh we we can't just be satisfied uh, with our um, with our hybrid um, identities or even hybrid talents. We we have to really get down in the in the trenches of social contradiction in a um, in an intentional, scientific, and dialogical uh, way. Uh, I'll, I'll double click everything that Tongo said. Uh, the only thing I would probably add is that I think the role in, in the most simplest way, I think the role of a poet and artist in general is probably to remind us how to feel uh, at the core. Um, there are a lot of anesthetizing distractions in life in this particular capitalistic extractive culture, this white supremacist culture, this patriarchal XYZ culture. Um, and we forget to feel. And I think that is probably one of our most brilliant tools as humans is that compass of emotion. Uh, and it is the most dangerous depending on what's where you sit in the world to have a populace uh, tapped in and in deep presence with what feels um, right and wrong and everything in between. So, mm, thank you. Yes, the power of of feeling, feeling everything, and then acting upon it. Um, thank you for that. Um, I do want to start bringing in some of the questions from our very active audience here. Um, so if anyone does have questions, please direct those to the, the Q&A box. Um, but I want to start with this question, uh, which says, literary writing is indeed a slow process and takes up a lot of time. So with the urgency of excavating colonialism, imperialism, racism, etc., how can we refine our writing to something that is truly realistically and consistently can build upon the landscape of social activism? Um, I, I tend to just uh, what well, well, are you are you sure you don't have enough time? <laughs> uh, that 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 uh, that that gets clear. I think that gets clarified in in, in praxis. But um, a help a helpful way uh, to look at things is to to give uh, the two threads their due, and give the two threads your efforts. Um, and so I would, again, I, I would satisfy my, um, you know, or your uh, duty to, uh, to work for the humanization of all people um, with, a, with a committed revolutionary praxis that does take you, um, again, down into the, you know, down into the day in, day out realities um and deal with that praxis on its terms according to you know theories that have been uh, uh, uh you know produced and tested and amended uh, uh throughout a, a great a beautiful history of, of resistance um at the same time uh you know deal with your craft deal with with writing according to its interesting uh, terms and, 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 and potentials. But a, a, good, a good way to go about things is actually to, to, to not be so quick to tie the, the, the threads together, that really immerse yourselves uh, or immerse yourself in both, um, both, both facets of humanization. And, uh, and then when, 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 a, uh, when a moment of convergence presents itself, uh, take advantage. Uh, 
I, th I guess I was thinking about like how much I wish I had more time to eat in the day. And I don't, but I do. And if I don't, I will probably die. That's what the, all the books say. And so what is that drive, that instinctive, that physiological primal thing that says you must nourish your body now? And while, I, while it pushes against time, I also will submit to that. And I'm not sure if that the what I'm saying is a response to the question. It's a beautiful question, but I wonder if how much we are, how much we believe that we're in control of the process versus it being kind of having its own momentum. And perhaps if we let it lead us a little bit it may feel a little bit more like timeless, so to speak, like time travel, if that makes sense. Are we talking way too poetic right now? You get me and Tongo in a room talking about art and poetry activism. It's like, what language we need? What? Somebody needs to translate. You know what I mean? So, uh, but I mean, I would also on a practical level, I, really, I struggle with writing too, because I'm, I have a child, I have a full-time job. I, I am living through a pandemic just like the rest of us. Single mom, very, very, time is a, is a great commodity on this side of the screen. And I think about all the different ways that the story can be, can live um, and can also be kind of not contained as in ca caged, but you know, all, all the different ways that I can carry the story momentarily until it finds its final or permanent home. So whether am I recording, am I note taking on things, am I, you know, stringing things together that may not have kind of a, a traditional sequence or logic, but is there value still in that, perhaps? I think it makes no sense for lots of folks. I know, I'm sorry, but in my, in my mind, it was like perfect. I'm like, yes, I nailed that question. I don't know. <laughs> Both of you are just so poetic in your answers, but also so wise in the advice that you're giving. And so I think, I think you both answered the question. Um, I wanna ask two more questions before we wrap. I'm kind of gonna combine a couple of questions that I see here, which are kind of talking about inspiration um, and kind of traditions, both of words, so writing, but also freedom or freedom movements. What um, have you drawn inspiration from and kind of what would you recommend to others to, to be inspired by? Um, mm, mm -hmm. um, I draw, I draw inspiration from like very ordinary human things. I draw inspiration from, um, Kind of like an awkward smile, a very kind of like a held back but full, fully charged smile when I'm out at dinner and I see two people who I imagine might be meeting um, for the first time and intimacy is growing. I, I, I draw inspiration from the way my son sleeps and the way his just body lets go completely. Um, uh, I draw inspiration from very ordinary, both the beautiful and, and sometimes the heartbreaking. Um, mm -hmm. I draw inspiration from uh, good energy. You know, you've ever been in a good theater and a good protest or in a good little cipher and the energy is just right. Uh, you don't even know the fo folks to the left and the right, but the energy is right. People are always like, oh, that energy is good. That's a real thing. Um, yeah. And, and it, 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 if you all would allow me to be much uh, evil twin, you know, <laughs> I draw inspiration. We, we can also draw inspiration for when we don't have a sun in California for a few days because of the forest fires, you know, 
uh, uh, we can draw inspiration from these children locked up in these cages, you know, toddlers and eight year olds locked up in cages. We can we can uh, we can draw inspiration from all the political prisoners who need to be freed. Matulu Shakur, uh, who needs to come home right now. Uh, there's all kind of uh, you know there, there, there's all kind of urgency uh, that the, the the ruling class and 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 their apparatus have um, you know provide us daily. Um, and on on, on another, uh, if, if I may switch back, <laughs> you know, I, I think uh, 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 meditation is a great primer for inspiration because the more you can um, turn down um, or soften your uh, projection, the more, um, you know, the more you can see the, um, you know, the cosmos and all things or just the interesting dances and all things, you know. But let me end it back evil. <laughs> you know what I mean? The biosphere is not going to make it, <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, <laughs> let us do what we have to do. <laughs> I mean, look, I double click everything Tongo saying there's great urgency you know, in, 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 in the, in our own demise, you know, or the, 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 the potential of our own demise. So yeah. And the capital we and capital R our collective. I, I dig up and feel all of that. Well, I think you've left us with some essential advice, um, that we can find hope both in what we have alongside us, what we experience right now, but also what we want to build and create together. And I think there's this urgency of the collective. And so thank you both for bringing this all to the table, for engaging with us through poetry, through this dialogue. I'm so, so appreciative of the work that you both are doing together and in, all, in your communities. Um, and I also want to give Mush a special shout out and have you claim your title um, as you speak's new executive director. So <laughs> special shout out, it's not officially included in your bio, but I um, think- I am still okay. trying to keep up and update that bio. I don't know what's circulating <laughs> in the webs, but thank you very much. Shout out to all my you speaks family in the house. My board is here. We got some staff here and thank you all. And I'm, I'm honored, I'm truly, truly honored to be back in the city of my birth, so. Mm. Well, thank you again. Thank you, Mush. Thank you, Tongo. Thank you, Liz, for this wonderful evening. I want to thank the Asian Art Museum again for partnering with us on this program. And thank you for our very active audience um, for engaging with us, <clears throat> excuse me, in the chat and through the questions. I encourage you to continue these conversations beyond this space. Um, continue engaging with the programming and the work that we're doing at our institutions, that we're doing in our communities. Um, for more information about what we're doing at MOAD, you can visit our website, which is moadsf.org. We have many programs, many poetry programs and beyond happening every single week. So please support, please join us in our community as a member. Please donate if you are able to. All of that information is accessible through our website. Um, and so with that, I want to thank everyone again for being here this evening and hope that you have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you all. Thank you to Mush, Tongo, and Liz. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> Take care, everyone.